according to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund of 2006, 45.2% of death row inmates are white, while 41.8% are black. However, according to the Census Bureau of 2000, 75% of the U.S. population is white, while blacks represent only about 12%. Hence, statistically, African Americans are overrepresented on America's death row. Now, what a number of death penalty opponents will have you believe is that simply African Americans commit more murders than white people. However, as social scientist Michael K. Brown astutely notes, it is more accurate to say that more African Americans are arrested for and convicted of capital murder. And there is a fine line between those two, given what we already know about the tendency of our system to punish innocent people. Furthermore, Brown continues by stating that these studies fail to control for non-racial variables of sentencing, or account for the fact that African Americans disproportionately enter the criminal justice system at an earlier phase in their lives. And given that our nation has a recidivism rate of about 70% of people re-entering prison, and given that two-thirds of death row inmates have prior convictions, we see that African Americans, by virtue of their relationship to the criminal justice system, are more likely to work their way towards being accused or perhaps even committing more violent crimes. Hence, the death penalty reinforces and articulates racial injustice in our society. But also, racial injustice takes place within the courtroom itself. A 1998 report of the American Bar Association found a pattern of race of victim or race of defendant discrimination in 96% of states. Since 1976, 213 black and white convictions have resulted in death sentences, compared to 15 white and black. A multitude of statistical studies, starting with the Belda study in the 1987 McCleskey v. Kemp Supreme Court decision, have controls for upwards of 80 non-racial variables and still found that a black culprit and a white victim was the most likely combination to generate a death sentence. Also, it was found in the, the Supreme Court decision of Miller L. v. Dredke in 2005 that Dallas County removed 91% of eligible black jurors from capital cases by virtue of attempts by the prosecution. Prosecutors are five times more likely to seek the death sentence for black and white murders, according to the South Carolina Law Review of Autumn 2006. Also, a number of studies, such as mock trial studies launched by Bauer, Steiner, and Sandys in 2001, have noted that jurors tend to base their decisions on racial stereotypes. The Washington Post of March 21, 2004 shows that death penalty supporters are about a third more likely to have prejudiced views of African Americans. Thus, prosecutors have an interest and a tendency to construct juries that are more likely to not only generate death sentences, but sentence African Americans to death, and also choose jurors who have racist tendencies. For example, we might look to the words of Victor Walter, a juror in the case of African American Gary Sterling in Texas, who, during the trial, was quoted as saying, quote, sometimes those niggers will start hollering and cursing, and pretty soon they'll start shooting. These are the types of people that manage to wind up on juries because of prosecutorial strategies and incompetent defense attorneys. Finally, according to the Southern Law Review of Audit 2006, police more rigorously investigate murders of whites and blacks. 1.6% of white and black murders end, end up in death sentences. Prosecutors just don't care. Black victims don't get a day in court. And a final dimension of capital punishment that we need to briefly explore is its thoroughly cruel and unusual nature. Now, there are a number of ways that we can investigate this, but one of the most salient is the targeting of mentally retarded and mentally ill individuals. Now, it is worth noting that in 2002, the Supreme Court outlawed the execution of mentally retarded individuals. However, it is also worth noting that you are only as mentally ill as you are able to, to prove. For instance, Marvin Lee Wilson, who has an IQ of about 61, 70 is called out for mental retardation, has been on death row since 1994. Now, while it is well documented that he is mentally retarded, on appeals, his defense attorney failed to file paperwork to prove that he was mentally retarded, a court-appointed attorney. Indeed, you are only as mentally retarded as you are wealthy enough to prove that you are. And this has nothing to the fact that mentally ill people are still going to death row. For instance, 85% of people on death row, according to the American University Law Review in November 2006, have damaged frontal lobes, a condition which impairs judgment. However, court-appointed defense attorneys rarely, if ever, investigate this dimension of their defendants because they simply don't have the time to. And prosecutors have no interest in exploring these dimensions. Now, these are just a few reasons to oppose capital punishment. But the important thing to keep in mind is that we ought to resist the typical pro-death penalty tendency to separate the death penalty from its context. 
and realize that it is inseparable from an unjust American society. Thank you.